Desperately, we'd been trying to get into the Olympics for a very long time. Um, and, you know, that battle was always going to continue. You know, the very early 80s, there was always protests and, um, you know, people were mentioning the word discrimination every time they spoke on the radio, TV, an event, whatever it was, just trying to promote the fact that there, there was no real reason why we couldn't be in the Olympics. Men's water polo obviously had been in since 1900. Um, you know, so that was part of the journey. The protests at the airport obviously gained a lot of media attention and, and I think if it wasn't for that moment, I don't think we would have been at the Olympics for Sydney 2000. To be part of that and be part of that team is just phenomenal. One of my really strong memories is actually getting our Olympic blazer for the first time, standing there and then they played the national anthem. Lots of people couldn't continue because it was so emotional and holding back the tears. And I remember John Bertrand saying, oh, you ladies are gonna to have to remember the words to the national anthems. And he just didn't get what it meant to us to finally get that blazer with the Olympic rings on it. We were at the Olympics, it was incredible. We never really said, we're going to win a gold. Like, we, obviously, that was what our aim was, but we were very focused on the processes of getting there. We were underdogs. No one, realistically, we're water polo. No, we're not really in the media. We're not really recognised. But um, the lead up towards the final, we obviously were winning, and everyone wanted to to, to interview us and, and meet with us. But I think we, again, we had the processes. We weren't allowed to interview. We were focusing on on that task as was to win and, and nothing else. To see that many people, there's 17,000 and the roar, like I get goosebumps thinking about, this is the, I just said, this is the first time we've ever had this many people watch us play water polo. This is just phenomenal. Like it was amazing. It was a very slow game. It was very tough because we were tired and they were tired as well. So we we're on equal paths, but it was very just attack, defense. It was a very defensive game when the Americans equalised. I remember the goal going in and I just, and I looked at the clock and there was only a few sec. well, I think there was 14 seconds left on the clock at that stage. And I think, I, I, I was like, we are going for extra time. There's about three or four of us that can pull a shot off. And I remember there was three of us on the bench looking at each other thinking, you better put us in. Like we were just thinking that because if you need to get a goal, you need to put us in. He put myself, Simone and Bron in, um, in the water. And I, I remember going, okay, we can do this. I remember seeing 1.3 seconds above, above the goals. And I just shot, and I was at 10 meters and I just shot and just placed the top corner and it just went in, like, thank God. <laughs> and obviously to score that goal, like, yes, amazing. Like, oh, it's it, it's over, it's, it's done. And, I just remember punching the air and celebrating with friends and just was so exciting. It was just, I didn't want to go an extra time, yeah. I found it quite surreal. It was actually uh, like incredible that we were all lined up. We're in our cap order. We're all standing behind the blocks. It was one of those, it was just the moment. It's like, do you believe like we have actually done it? Truly for me, it's the friendships and that's the part that I miss the most. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I just, um, uh, they could have given me a bottle top for the actual medal itself. It's, it, it's what it actually stands for and that whole journey. And I just adore like all of my the teammates bond. from, you know, not only the Olympics, but everything beforehand. Yeah, you can't take away that, that bond that you have with your teammates, I think, more than anything.